Welcome to the 5D um, Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, your host. I'm broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. This is my new home. And uh, I welcome you all to come and visit me. Sending you lots of love and light from this very powerful magnetic uh, vortex on the planet. And uh, it seems like it's really vibrating because people come in here from all over the world. And uh, I, I went to my old hotel today and talked to uh, the staff uh, because I stayed there for one month and I kind of bonded with them. And I asked him, is it slowing down? And, and they say, it's never been like this before. People keep coming. And uh, normally this is a seasonal place and this is the end of the season, but there is no sign of slowing down. So people are very gravitated to this place from, from all over the planet. So the topic of uh, this week, we're going to talk about the spiritual seekers challenges. And uh, the type of issues that we come across as we're on this path and the confusion that we encounter, uh, times that we go uh, through tough time and we feel like we deviated from our path. So it happens to pretty much all of us. And uh, I'm going to bring some light on that and share with you uh, of my own experiences, my own challenges, what I've encountered and uh, how um, I was able to overcome it. For the moment, let's do an active meditation. We haven't done an active meditation for a long time. And uh, I feel like today is a very good day to do one. So I'm going to ask you to stand up. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to be connecting with the ground. We're going to be... So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your feet touching the ground and you feel the earth and you're comfortable with that. Feeling the earth. And so kind of like get yourself grounded. And just imagine right now that from your torso from here down you have roots going into the planet you have developed roots so you're just like this old ancient heavy tree that's been here for hundreds of years and it's got roots going deep in the planet and as you breathe in I want you to imagine that your roots are pulling in the prana of the earth and it's green energy. You're pulling in green light into from your roots and you're bringing the energy in. So let's do that. So bring, bring the energy in. Green light, prana coming from planet earth, green energy. And coming here, and you're breathing it out. So let's try to do it one more time. Now, as the energy is coming into your body, when it comes to your root chakra, I would like you to see that the energy is spiraling up and connecting all the seven chakras to each other. And then when you're breathing out, the, of course you're breathing out out of your mouth, but the energy is going out of your crown chakra. So you breathe it in and you breathe it out and the energy you're visualizing that it's going through, spiraling through your body, going to the 
crown chakra and then it's going up into the space. So you're actually, what you're doing is you're making yourself a conduit connecting the earth to heaven and this energy is coming through you, spiraling to your body. You're bringing the powerful prana of the earth and having it cleanse and connect all your chakras to each other as this energy is spiraling through you and then it goes up. So let's do it again. And if you have a physical disability and you can't stand up and do it, just be seated and do it while you're sitting. One more time. So you're kind of bending as you're bending, you're pulling the energy up. So now you are going to go up and down, and as we're going up and down in this motion, you're going to activate a generator within yourself, and this generator is sucking the prana off of, from the earth into your body. So you're making a sound like... You're going up and down, and you're making this sound gently. Create the gener turn on the generator, activate the grid. Mm -hmm. 
area. Feel the presence. And for a moment, disconnect from your mind and disconnect from anything external and just bring your attention to the presence, to that which is here, the presence of the being, her majesty, the supreme being. The divine self. Bring your attention to this. That which is here. Now we're just going to do an active meditation. We're going to be shaking. You're going to be shaking and making noises. It's just kind of a letting go. So we start. So <laughs> Take a deep breath. Whew. Sink in, sink inside yourself. One more time. Oh, yeah, what does it shake it, 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 Take a deep breath.
And as you're just in this place, I would like you to put your hands on your heart and come to this place that you 100% love and accept yourself without any stories, without put your self-judgment away and just accept and love yourself in this moment for who you are and what you are without any stories. Put the story away and repeat after me. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody because I'm love, because I'm light, because I'm God. That's why I love myself and I forgive myself. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 Now you can just go back to your seat. And just stay in your meditation, stay in this quiet place. Just one moment, I'm sorry. Hang out, hang out in this moment, hang out in this place of being quiet. Hang out with the presence, with your own self, the holy self. The presence of the enlightened one, Lord God, the Creator, that which has created the world, the universe, that which has given us birth, being run by this powerful being, presence.
you're simply hanging out in this place with yourself. with the Holy Self in this moment, without an agenda, trying not to get caught into trying to accomplish anything. You just hang out, hang out here in this unified field, hang out in this moment hang out with this without really pushing yourself to accomplish something. Slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. Come back into shifting again. Uh, the attention will get shifted from a your attention on the silence and being quiet, being here with this aspect of yourself, and now you're shifting your attention into the other world. So your, your attention gets shifted into this conversation. So what you do is you just shift where your attention is. And consequently, you can shift your attention on fear, worry, anxiety. You can get into the news or get into all kinds of different stories about what is going on in the world. 
you can put your attention there and really go deep into it. And then you'll get very uncomfortable. And you will be living in a lot of fear and worries. Or you can shift your attention again into this other part of you that's quiet, into a quiet place within yourself. Then as you shift your attention on meditation and love and the presence of your own self, then all of a sudden everything becomes quiet. There is no more, there is no stories. So that's something I'm trying to share with everyone is like, because we're consciousness. Consciousness is operating through the being here and it depends where the attention of it goes to. And it's almighty, it's infinite. So when its attention gets really narrowed and goes on, fear, worry, limitation, naturally that becomes the reality. That becomes your reality. And naturally you're going to suffer. But if you learn how to shift your attention towards this other part of yourself, which is expanded, which is present, which is quiet, which is here, then suddenly you begin to feel love you begin to feel bliss, you feel expanded, you feel all is very well, there's no stories, everything disappears, all the stories disappear, and you're here. So where do you want to put your attention? So you want to pay, pay attention in becoming aware and awake of where this attention goes all the time. If your attention goes that I'm lonely, I'm single, I don't have a partner, nobody loves me, my kids left me, I don't have a lover, then that becomes a reality and it makes you suffer. If your attention is what's going to happen to me in 10 years from now on, and what am I going to do for my retirement, or I don't have money, or I have to save money, or I have to worry about my retirement, and blah, 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 then that becomes your reality. So you're dwelling in a future. So where does the attention go? You need to pay attention to that because the mind naturally, because of its nature, it can't be here. So it's always gravitated to a different place, to a different time. It drags you outside of here because here there is no mind. When you're here, you are in no mind. Or you may be using your working mind, and that's not a problem. Working mind is, yeah, if you need to buy a ticket to fly from Germany to Tulum, Mexico, you need to go online and you need to research and find prices, time, uh, what time are you flying, where is it, is there a connecting flight, are you going to be... Uh, becoming directly or not, you need to figure things out. So that's your working mind that you're using it to accomplish some task. And there's nothing wrong with that. God has given you a brilliant mind. You might as well use it. But when you're not aware of the self, you're not aware of what the mind does to you, then your mind becomes a horrible slave master and it will take you to all these dark places. 
And as far as the topic of the day, talking about the spiritual seeker challenges is this for a lot of us is a long road. It's got a lot of ups and downs, a lot of different challenges that happen. And a lot of it has to do with where you're at on your awakening process. Where are you in this wheel of evolution when it comes to awakening? And I don't have a measurement stake to find out where each person's at unless when I start working with them, especially when I do the live training program, because I'm spending three to four months with uh, my students, then I can tell where they're at. After a while, I can tell where they're at in their evolution, spiritual evolution, because it becomes apparent to me how fast they can catch things and how attentive they become or how focused they get. So, but as for myself, I had to go through a lot of challenges. Um, I mean, when I came across this information, um, a part of me really recognized it right away because I was very hungry, very thirsty to learn and find a teacher, a spiritual teacher to teach me. And uh, so a part of me was really super thirsty, but a part of me was also a kid. A part of me also was like immature and uh, wanting to go party, wanting to go um, play around, which there's nothing wrong with that. But my attention was more on party than the actual work. So, and eventually they kind of blended into one another. And, uh, but it took a number of years. I would go into getting focused and really being 100% into it to completely losing my focus and going into a different direction. So in the years that I went to India um, and coming across all these beautiful teachers like Punjaji, Papaji, my sat guru, uh, coming across Amma, the hugging mother, uh, even though she wasn't my teacher, but you're in their vibrations, you come across them. Um, It took me a while before I really could understand. It took me a while before my ears, my heart, my eyes could really see. I mean, of course, your eyes see in, in physical world and your ears hear. But spiritual ears and spiritual heart, um, for it to open so you can hear what the teacher or existence is telling you that's a different story. But one of the challenges is that what I've noticed is most spiritual seekers today um, are looking for instant grat gratification. They're looking for something quick, shortcut. And it's like, give me a pill. So I just try, give me a pill or do your hands like this and do some voodoo on me. And then I'm enlightened or all my, my problems are, they disappear. And it just doesn't work that way. You, you have to do the work. You have to go through the process for a lot of us. Again, it depends on where you're at. 
But for most of us, we have to do the work. And no one else can do it for you. So you have to do it. And so how do I do the work? How do I do the work? Because basically, the general mentality is that give me something to do and I'm going to do this so I get this kind of result. From doing this, I get this, these results. So that's the general mentality. And if I don't get this result, since it's fast paced these days, everything is fast, same as the spirituality. So this becomes a really a big challenge because you want it fast and you're doing something, you're not getting results and immediately you want to drop it and move on to the next teacher. Oh, there's a new thing coming. So especially in the younger generations, they're just going from one thing to another and another and another, and they're miserable. Because we're not learning a system that help us to dive into inner silence, inner peace. We're being taught methods that activate our minds because we want instant gratification. And then this particular teaching is basically, it's based on paying attention, paying attention. So, and a lot of times, people, they're not paying any attention. I mean, you talk to them and you teach things, but they're not listening to you. They're not hearing what you say. And if they do hear what you say, they're not implementing it in everyday life. Because the teachings and the wisdom must be experienced directly by you. You're the one who ha has to experience it. And when are the times that the spiritual seeker learns something or advances? They, we mostly advance and learn something when we're in pain, when we're challenged, when we're in some sort of something dramatic tra or traumatic has happened in our lives and we're in that state. So that's where existence gets us. And now we're paying attention. So, but in early stages, a lot of people think that they're a victim. They're being victimized by life because bad things are happening to them. And they don't realize that these bad things are not really bad things. They're meant to awakening us. They're meant to getting our attention because we're simply not paying any attention. So things have to happen to you. You know, you get slapped this way, that way. You know, you get beat up, you get pushed around. You get someone screw you over. You know, you are with a partner and the partner steals all your money. You go to divorce, you, your kids leave you, you get in an accident, you get cancer, you get things happen to you. And you think it's bad luck. It has nothing to do with luck. It's basically existence is communicating to teach us something and we're not paying attention. So it has to happen again and again and again and again, naturally, because you're not paying attention. So one of the most typical things that happen in our spiritual awakening on this path is that 
many people, including myself, I myself is included, okay? So um, what we have is we're on the path, we're very dedicated, we're doing all the work, we're advancing, everything's going really well. And then something happens, whatever it is, you, it looks like it appears that you have deviated from the path. And then maybe five years go by or 10 years go by. After 10 years, you come and say, oh my God, I lost my way. I lost my path. 10 years gone by. I used to be very spiritual. I used to meditate. I used to go sit with the guru. I used to do a lot of work and I lost it all. And then you come back again. So there is an appearance that you lost it. It looks like you lost it. And then you come back. So that's something that happens to a lot of spiritual oh, seekers. Yeah. You know what, what happened was I was really on it. I was doing a lot of work. Then I met this man and I fell in love with him. And then we started having kids and then we moved to another country. And then I became a, a mommy with two kids and I lost my path. It happens. But you can never escape your destiny. You can't escape awakening. So it's gonna come back and get you. But it's a part of the path is that you have this appearance that you lost it. It looks like you lost it. That's a part of it. I just wanna share this with you. If you're there, you've been there, you've gone through that, know that that is also a part of the journey. Then there is this period that you're going around and round and round. You're not in bliss, but you're not suffering all the time. You're sort of in between the plays. It's more suffering than bliss. Let's put it this way, actually. You are reading the books, you're attending courses, you know, you, you watched Eckhart Tolle, you've gone to him, you've gone to Muji, you've gone to Tony Robbins, you've gone, you've read books from, I don't know, Nim Karoli Baba, Muktananda, these are the old teachers, you've done Osho stuff, or you do new things that is happening, you're doing shamanic healing retreat, you go see the shamans in South America, you've done ayahuasca, you've done Reiki, Reiki one, two, mastery, you've done all kinds of different things, but you feel stuck. You don't feel like you're going around and around. You're not going anywhere. It looks like it. And you haven't managed to go beyond the mind yet. You do workshops, retreats and stuff like that, reading books, attending seminars, doing webinars like this. It makes you feel good for a day or two or a week or two, but then you fall back into your old pattern, old ways. And you're suffering and you're questioning life. Why am I doing this? Why am I on this path? Why don't I just, I wish I could go back into ignorance because yeah, in some ways, ignorance is bliss. If you're ignorant in a way, you sometimes wish you could go back and not be spiritual, be like your family, your sister, your friends, your, a lot of people around you, co-workers who had no idea of the world of spirit. At least they're one dimensional. So a part of you is like, I wish I could be like them. But you can't go back. But you're not going forward either. 
So that's a tough place. So I want you to know that that is a part of the deal. That is a part of your journey. That scenario is also a part of your path. So I got some good news and some bad news for you. The bad news is that you have to go through these different stages. Most of us, most spiritual seekers have to go through these painful stages that you feel stuck and you're not advancing, you're not going anywhere. So, You fall back into your addictions, whatever that is, drugs, alcohol, sugar, food, bad relationships, abusive relationships. We all go back into our addictions. Hey, we all have addictions. So don't sit down and think you're the only one who's got it. We all have some sort of addictions. We're all, as a society, kind of addicted. We're drug addicts, we're sugar addicts. We have addictions, all of us. So don't beat yourself up. Definitely drugs, 100%. Because they're harboring us to be on some kind of pharmaceutical prescription medication, or you just do some um, party drugs or whatever. Or sugar, or food, or shopping habits, or whatever, something, some kind of addiction is there. So what happens is that you have the natural tendencies that when you feel like you're not going anywhere and you're, you fail or something happens, you go through a heartbreak or whatever is the story, you feel sorry for yourself or something happens, is naturally you go back to familiar places, which is addiction. You go to your addiction. You can examine your life, take a look and see if it's applying to you or not. So, and that is okay too. That's okay too. You basically want to recognize these things because a part of it is that the closer you get to the light, the more animated things get. The closer you're to the light, the stronger is your shadow. So as you're working on yourself in this evolving, and then as you're evolving and you're becoming so-called more spiritual, you also your shadows are getting stronger too. So I share this with you so you don't beat yourself up that, oh, I do so much work, I'm so spiritual, I'm so close, but then how come my addictions are getting stronger or they're appearing or they just come and grab me? It's because you're getting closer to the light. So things are becoming more obvious. When you're not so close to the light, and you're numb, you're not sensing things. You're numb, you're not feeling things. But the more expanded you get, the closer you get, you feel a lot more. You become more aware. It's like, pay attention. A lot of us, like, like if I go to a restaurant and it's, there is really loud music, sometimes I can handle it. But a lot of times when I'm really in this place within myself, 
I can't deal with loud music. I want silence. I want to go somewhere peaceful and quiet so I can digest my food. If there's this really loud boom, boom, boom music or some pop music from Madonna or Britney Spears or something that its frequency is not resonating, resonating with me, it's poppy. I can't eat food there. It just bothers me. Or there's loud people or there's a lot of noise. So pay attention to yourself. See how much more sensitive you've become as you've been progressing. You can call it as you're getting older or you can just say as you're going forward. So you're becoming more sensitive. Sensitivity comes. More awareness comes. These are all improvements. These are all indications that you're getting closer to the light. You're becoming more truthful with yourself. You are more paying attention to your spiritual needs. Of course, it can go to the extreme as well. And I see that, you know, that it gets too much. Like there are some people, I can't hang out with them. They bug, they bug me. They really annoy me because they're too spiritual. So it can become an ego driven thing too. But you just examine yourself and see where you're at. It's very simple. You know where you're at. But again, these spiritual challenges, they're part of the process, they happen. And the most common one that I hear from a lot of people that they feel stuck in their path, their spirituality, and or they hate what they're doing and they like to do kind of a work, being a healer, being a channeler, being a light worker. They like to make their money from that, but they're making their money from something else. But that's also an idea. You don't want to be stuck there either. It's okay. Make your money however you can make your money. And then use your money to do your spiritual work. Don't trip over it. That because you're not making your money from spiritual work, that's bad and you're lost. No, that's how existence created a situation for you to make your money in this way. And find the spirit in that too. What makes you think working as an insurance agent or in an insurance company, that's not spiritual. What makes you think that? that to be spiritual and making money from that, you, you have to do light working ways that you're serving the light. No, it doesn't matter because when you're doing kind of healing work or being a psychic, you're still thinking about making money. You're, you're doing some kind of work as a channeler, as a teacher, as a spiritual teacher, whatever it is, believe me, you think about making money just as if you're working in an insurance industry. None of them is more holy than the other. I don't see one superior to the other. So don't get trapped into this thing. That could be a trap too. If existence wants to take you into this path of making your money from spiritual work or selling supplements or products that are 
spiritual, existence will take you in that direction. It will happen for you. Whether you try or you don't try, life will take you in that direction. I know more spiritual people making their money from that are 100 times more money oriented than average guy who is doing real estate or, or they're in corporate world. Yeah, the guy in the corporate world or people in the mainstream, they don't speak our language. I get it. Their focus is the world, the physical world. I get it. I understand that. But there's no glory in doing spiritual work or selling products or, or things like that, that you're always trying to pull up with some kind of gig or trip or whatever to sell your products to other people. That's the same. I don't see a difference. Your goal is to make money. You understand? Do you, do you see what I'm talking about? Are you with me? Are you here? Yes? No? So these are challenges of the spiritual seekers. And I'm just being very honest with you. I'm being very straightforward. I'm not pa painting a rosy picture for you. And I'm not being very straightforward is my job is not anything more special or better than someone else's job. I don't even see it. Oh, wow, Zarathustra, you're serving the world and you are better. There's no such a thing as being better of someone else. It's just who you are. What kind of character you demonstrate and whether you walk your talk and your actions are matching your words. But this is not better than what you do. I don't see it better or worse. It's just this is the way the direction of life has brought me to do. But you have the same challenges as everybody else. You still have all the challenges that everyone else in this planet has financial challenges. So don't get stuck in that place. Because that's a trap. It's an ego trap. It's an idea. God is in everything. You're a nurse working in a hospital. You're, you're a teacher working in a kidney garden. You're a mom taking care of your kids. You are a mechanic. You're an engineer. Everything is God. Engineering is God. Being a mechanic, an engine, you're fixing Mercedes-Benz engine. That is God too. You're serving God. You're serving humanity. Whatever function you are having in this life, you're a worker doing something that's needed to be done. That is spiritual. The guru or the healer is not more, that job is more, it's not more spiritual than the, the mechanic, than the janitor. The janitors that come and clean the toilets in a university or in a college, they're needed. Their job is spiritual too. Someone has to do that function. Someone has to take care of that. Otherwise, who's going to do it? Oh, I'm too good. I'm too holy. I'm too educated. I can't get my hands dirty. Oh, really? You're too holy for that. Are you with me? Yes? Comprende? Good. Another thing is that people ask me, how do you find the right teacher? That's another challenge. Because there's so much out there these days. I, I'm just coming up with what comes up in my mind, you know, and you may come up with something that I'm not, I haven't thought about it yet. So feel free 
to share with me uh, some of your challenges as a spiritual seeker. So how do you find the right teacher? How do you find the right teaching? That's a big one. I went into the spiritual market for a number of years trying uh, some sort of Buddhism. I looked into the Islamic Sufism. I um, looked into uh, Hinduism a bit, different aspects, and nothing was answering my questions. Nothing was giving me satisfactory answers and different religions as well. It was all like belief based. And I needed something more solid than that. I needed something to answer my, my questions. Uh, Amir, are you there? Yes, I'm here. How are we doing with lighting? Because the lighting changed here in yeah, it's changed, but it's, where I'm at, but it's changed, but it's okay. No problem. It's okay because I can, right. All right. Because that's a constant challenge. Yeah. You're good. So when, no yeah. Okay. Good. So, <laughs> So here's one challenge we have here in Tulum. Tulum is uh, it's busy. So one thing you're going to discover in Mexico, it's, uh, it's always busy, which in a way it's fun because it just, it's a life because you're in interaction with life. But uh, it's not like the West or it's not like living in a country in the West that it's all quiet. Just uh, get rid of this air conditioning. It's making my nose run. So, um, okay, there's something. Turn off that air con. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Anna Marie, thanks. Or put it on 25 degree, you are getting sick too quick. Well, thanks, Anne-Marie. Um, how do I find the right teacher, right teachings? Well, you're just gonna have to go to different teachers and different teachings to see who you are resonating with. Who speaks your heart language? And that doesn't mean that you find one teacher and that's going to be your teacher for the rest of your life. You may be grooving with one teacher for 10 years, and then you outgrow that teaching. And you get to a point that you're, it's not working for you anymore. Or maybe it's too dogmatic. Personally, I don't like teachings that are dogmatic. I don't like rules. I don't like do's and don't do's. And in order to be spiritual, you have to be vegetarian or give up sex or uh, live uh, in solitude in an ashram or blah, blah, blah. So those kind of teachings don't work for me. And some people love it. Some people really need it structured. And you need someone to tell them what to do, what not to do. And, it, and giving them a lot of practices. For me, that wasn't the case. For me, when I came across my spiritual teacher, uh, Papaji, um, he basically the first day said, there is nowhere to go and nothing to do. There's nowhere to go and nothing to do. What? What do you mean there's nowhere to go and nothing to do? He said, you're already that which is you looking for. You're already that. And for me, it was like, wow. You mean I don't have to get up at five in the morning and go and sit somewhere and do some kind of uh, dynamic meditation or whatever 
no, you don't need to. Or I don't have to give up alcohol or sex or whatever. No, you don't have to. And I was like, wow, this dude is for me. This is my teacher. Because I was a lazy spiritual seeker. Somehow, I ended up doing a lot of the things like sitting in silence or going into like 30 days of fasting and, and naturally I did it on my own, but I didn't do it because my teacher asked me to do it. I did it because I was gravitated at one point in my life to sit in silence and not talk or fast for 45 days. It all happened naturally. It wasn't like I was I was told not to uh, told to do it. Okay, we have a question. Yeah, uh, uh, Britta, I'll get to your question too. <laughs> Why there's so many women? <laughs> so, um, you have to see what teaching, what teacher resonate with you. It sings the language of your heart. Can I it's say easy. It's easy for you to do it. Can I say something? Uh, yeah, who's this? Kamla Marie. Anna Marie, hi. Kamla Marie. Yeah, hello, go ahead, I'm listening. Um, yeah, well, it's just when you talk about like, how do I find the right teacher? And for me, it, I feel it's been really important. Yeah, to really um, feel it from inside. Like what resonates with me. Uh, and, 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 and I, I it's, you know, it's more like an inside job instead of, um, shopping around or yeah uh, for me it has been but it's also because I don't know all of a sudden I meet I meet someone I, I met this teacher um, soul voice teacher and it was um, at a time where I saw the light in in this way of healing and I'm, I also, I met you some years ago and it was sort of a, a calling, like, I don't know why I went to that event, but I just <laughs> felt I had to. Right. Like, like that. So it's, it's something that's just coming from, I don't know where, <laughs> spirit. <Right. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing. I mean, it is the spirit that leads us to places and we experience um, something puts these things together and take us to the right place. That's a part of it. Um, we will come across a specific teacher or teaching and you're with them, you feel the transmission and all of a sudden you just feel like something's really happening, something's really resonating with your heart. The words maybe, but normally it's beyond that. It's the energy, it's the presence, it's that transition, transmission that happens between the two or that love that you feel in between. Because a lot of times it's beyond the words. Like you meet somebody, you meet a man or a woman, and why are we attracted to this person? And they may not even be our type physically, but something is really singing in your heart and saying yes. And then you just sort of can't wait to see them again or talk to them again or hear their voice. With the teachings, for me, I can only talk about myself because this is the only experience I've had, my own direct experience with these beautiful awakened masters. 
And I was, I was lucky to be with a number of them. But the Advaita Vedanta teachings, the teachings of silence, was the one that attracted me the most. And among these teachers who were teaching it, Master Punjaji was the one that I felt more gravitated towards than anybody else. There were other teachers that I've come across. There are teachers that sometimes I check them out and listen to them, and I very much enjoy. But I don't feel, of course, I don't have that feeling of, of seeking anymore that disappeared, of looking, trying to find answers that has disappeared. In a way, it's a bummer because it was really fun being a seeker, but that's gone. But among these beautiful teachers that they taught the same line of teachings, I like the vibe. I like going to be with them and sit with them. I like that energy field that is there and sitting in the field and drinking from that field and sometimes really fun because I don't have to do anything because in past 12 years I'm the one who has to set up the event so it's work and sometimes it's just fun to go to somebody else's satsang and sit there and drink drink the energy because I don't have to do anything I just go sit there and enjoy it. So you just have to really tune in with yourself. As our sister Kamala just mentioned, you need to tune in and see what really pulls you. Where, where is it pulling you? And is it resonating with your heart? And then whether you're trusting this teacher, you're trusting this teachings. And if you're using the tools that they're giving you, are you using it? Are you applying it to your everyday life? And whether they work or not. Because I see, I've seen teachers in pseudo spirituality, there's a lot of tools they're giving you, but they don't work. They, they, they give you no results. You're just doing this and that, da, 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 but nothing happens. Is this teacher with what's teaching you and the tools giving you, does it bring you to inner peace? Are you finding ways to be balanced? Because yes. no teaching is has any effect or value if the teachings is not directing you to balance what good does it do okay i'm done 12 days of sham shamanic healing work and ayahuasca in colombia or in Peru or with Brazilians, and I did 11 days of this and 30 days of Temescal and blah, blah, blah. But I'm an emotional mess. I'm up and down all the time. I get extremely jealous. I get extremely sad. I want to kill. I, I'm laughing. I'm loving. And then I hate everyone. So what does this all this work done for you? You're not balanced. You have to become balanced and steady and come to a place that you have conquered emotional ups and downs. If you haven't conquered that and a simple news 
can trigger you and bring you to a place that you want to kill or commit suicide, then where are you? What have you done? How advanced have you become? So to me, that's more value than anything else. Or yeah, I've gone and done all these courses and yeah, I met with this guru and they cleaned up my ancestral stuff and they have balanced my chakras and they have cleaned my past, but I'm jealous all the time. I'm angry all the time. I carry a lot of anger in me. When my brother accomplishes something, I'm jealous to him. When I lose my parking spot to someone else, I want to get out of the car and beat them. So what, what is that work for? Yeah, great, nice medals here, but where are you? What have you done? Have you found inner peace? Are you quiet within? Are you practicing stillness? Does your presence bring harmony in your environment or creates chaos? Are you able to handle when somebody tells you something you don't like? They insult your prejudice. Can you handle that and stay calm and quiet because someone disagrees with your way? Someone is insulting your guru or your president or your hairstyle or your tribe. Can you stay still or you're going to get bent out of shape? just because they said something, because they're stupid. Where are you? What have you accomplished? You want to look at that. And the teaching that you're gravitated to, is it bringing you to inner balance, inner peace? Is it giving you tools to rise above the ideas of good or bad? Can you rise above morality or what society tells you is right or wrong? Can you rise above it? Can you go beyond? Or you're going to be stuck in human level where everybody else is at. Can you handle criticism? Can you handle come, somebody come and tell you, hey, you screwed up. You're making mistakes. You da, 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 da. Everything you do is wrong. Can you handle it? Whether it's genuine or not. Or you're going to get all defensive and uh, emotional. and uh, uh, uh. Because if you're going to get all defensive and emotional, to me, you haven't done anything. You haven't accomplished anything. I'm sorry. I don't care how many ayahuasca journeys you've taken, how many certificates for healing and shamanism you've taken, you cannot handle. You're still a child. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Rising to a yes. higher level of, yeah, rising to a higher level of consciousness it requires you elevating and conquering yourself, conquering your emotional ups and downs, conquering your crazy mind, recognizing how crazy this mind is and not giving into it. Recognizing that you have a murderer inside you, you have a rapist inside you, you got Hitler inside you, you got Mother Teresa inside you, you got a jealous man or woman inside you. You got anger inside you. You have hate inside you. You have to recognize all of these things are inside you. And admit it. That you, you carry hate. You carry anger. You carry a murderer. You carry love. You carry all of these things are within your own self. 
and not pointing finger at other people because you have to conquer yourself first. Is this teaching helping you to come to this place? Or it's just, it's a mental masturbation. You're just gonna do something and you think you've done something, but you're nowhere. You wasted your time. It was another workshop, but it didn't go anywhere. So you gotta be honest with yourself and really be the real spiritual seeker. Seek the teachings that help you elevate, not just wasting time. As simple as that. Kamala, you have something to say? Mm. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I'm just really, you, you were speaking about challenges and the challenges arose for me and has arisen and is arising for me when I don't listen. I don't listen to myself. I don't um, check in with myself. Uh, and and I, yeah, I really have to listen because then it's more easy. Then it's 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 effortless. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, great, fantastic. So you you see it. You're aware of it. And, and it was also a question at some point in this shadow work, like, okay, so do I even want to get better? Do I even want to get out of the suffering? Or am I just um, keeping myself here? Because, uh, yeah, I like to punish myself, actually. It's like self-destructive. And am I willing to look at that and let it go? And that mind is just, yeah, that mind. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's another that's that's another addiction that a lot of us are addicted to the suffering. I mean, I've come across a lot of people that I'm really genuine, genuinely trying to show them a way or giving them the tools that they can stop suffering and they don't want to use the tools. They don't want to do it. They just want to go back into the drama. And, and that's where they're at. There's nothing I can do. So it is an addiction. And for me, there was also the question of really, so do I love myself enough to want to heal this? And then finding out, okay, so this is the level of my self esteem. <laughs> this is the level of my worth, my self worth, where I am with this. And just to say, and I was like, yeah, okay, so I begin. Man, beautiful. Well, that's a very good place to arrive to because you, when you ask that question and you become aware of that particular issue or thing that you just brought up that by itself is a major accomplishment that's a turning point whether you can do something about it or not but that self-awareness level of self-awareness is huge yeah, you're doing a good job of course you love yourself enough that you're here you show up exactly yeah you show up. Well, thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. Anything else? Anybody else? No? So earlier I was talking about, uh, before we were all here, that I'm thinking, this is a thought, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm still feeling things. Um, I may put, uh, and you can write to me and let me know what you think or if you're into it. So I may just put a exquisite uh, retreat for only four people. So all together will be five people. You, you would all be living with me at my house. Of course, you all have your own bed and room and bathroom. And uh, 
and I will take you on a nine day journey. And the journey is, is gonna be here in Tulum. So we will be doing different activations at uh, the runes, the Mayan temples, pyramids. We will be going to the cenotes, the sacred cenotes. We'll be doing a lot of work. Most of it is gonna be outdoors uh, in the nature. And it's a very, very powerful place. And it would be, a uh, you don't want to stay inside when you're here. You want to be in the nature. But of course, we will be doing things inside as well, as, as far as the teachings, the moments we are meditating, whether it's inside, outside, so anyway, if you want to write back to me, I'm thinking about maybe I organize this for May, since some of you have gone through a harsh winter, and then you may want to come and get some sun on your skin and bathe into the energy of this place. And we'll take you to this beautiful, sexy ocean, which is turquoise blue and white sands and taking you to the cenotes and doing the cenotes they carry a lot of minerals in them so they're actually very healing uh, the other day my back was hurting and i went and spent about like 45 minutes in the water and my pain disappeared uh and then I was talking to a local gentleman and I said, I don't know what happened. I went to the cenote and, and uh, my pain disappeared. And he said, it's because it carries a lot of minerals. So it's very, very healing. And the entire area, it's, you have to be here because something in the air and the water that really, I can tell with my skin, it's rejuvenating and it's making you younger. So, it's a very exquisite place. I do plan on having retreats in this area. Uh, down the line, when I'm more comfortable and I have all my ducks in a row, uh, probably in September or October, I would have a larger retreat for a larger group. But for now, I thought that maybe I just have a small one for a small group of people. So it's very intimate and it's tight. So write to me if you're interested and give me some feedbacks. I was probably gonna be doing it in May. So we'll all have time to organize ourselves. If nobody has any more comments or questions, then uh, we're just gonna wrap for today. Um, we're gonna have our next Academy next Wednesday. And uh, it's, the Mexico time is gonna be from 12 to two in the afternoon. I know the time changed in the US and Canada. I didn't know the time changed in Canada till yesterday that I discovered that. So, um, and also uh, the time is gonna change in Europe. So you need to kind of adjust your time to, to our academy's time. Um, Hilda, you mentioned that's going to be on March 24th. Is that right? No, it's wrong. It was March 28th, as Marie told us. March 28th. Okay. Yeah. And then Mexico is going to change on April 5th. So, yeah. So we're going to make announcements, but just be aware. Adjust your time to it. Um, I don't have any public events yet. Uh, I will be putting up something uh, as soon as I have a proper office and I know my internet is good enough and I can do it. Uh, that's going to take a little bit longer. And then uh, once, once I'm comfortable, I'm going to put it out. Uh, for now, uh, the only thing I offer is my life training program, which is a one-on-one -on -one uh, tailor-made program for your specific needs. This program is 12 sessions, one and a half hour a session, and it takes between three to four months. And we will meet up uh, for a consultation 
you share with me about your concerns and what your spiritual goals are, where you like to get at, and then I'll tailor make, a, I design a program specifically to your needs. And we go from there. For that, you're welcome to write to me on my email, which is info at zaratustra.tv. And then we'll set up a Zoom meeting and we'll meet up for one hour and we talk about how this program works, how much it costs, what you can expect, and what is it I can do for you. Other than that, uh, my podcast, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter addresses are all Zaratustra 5D. A copy of this um, broadcast is going to be emailed to you. Uh, since you're a member of 5D Academy, it will go on Facebook and our YouTube channel, and they will go on our podcast. I guess I've pretty much covered everything. And also my uh, website is zaratustra.tv. Feel free to write to me if you have any comments, if you have any ideas about subjects that you would like me to talk about. Um, I'll be more than happy to do that. Sending you lots of love. Lots of love and light from Tulum, Mexico. And I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless. Namaste.